Okay, hear this out. This title of the video is not exaggerated. Microsoft says system were exposed. Not only just Microsoft, majority of the Fortune 500 companies and FBI, Real NSA, Treasury, State Health Department, and a whole lot of people, probably 18,000 people are vulnerable to this attack. This attack is no short than a Hollywood story, a Hollywood movie. I'm gonna walk you through with that. So sit back, relax, hit that subscribe button, and I'm gonna walk you through what just happened. So in case you are a regular subscriber or viewer of this channel, this video was not supposed to go today. There was another what is video what, which was supposed to go today, but that is scheduled for tomorrow, and we are gonna come back on that. But this is really an interesting story. I usually don't put too much of the news about cybersecurity, but this one needs to go out. So in this video, sit back and relax. I'm gonna walk you through just like probably you have joined a company and for the very first time you are hearing such massive big attacks. I'm gonna walk you through just like a friend so that you can understand each and everything and the gravity of the situation, what just happened. And yes, on a side note, feel free to connect the dots between why the Google was a little bit down a couple of days ago and how the things are shaping up and how the things will be shaping up in the 2021. Oh gosh, the moment I think that 2020 is gonna be over and it's no longer the worst, it becomes a nightmare again. Okay, so to understand this, let me first tell you this interesting thing in a story format so that you can connect the dots better. Now, cybersecurity is always a cat and mouse game. Sometimes you think that you are safe, but the next moment you know that you were being hacked. And in order to protect that, there are so many good companies which put advisories to the companies that, hey, this is how you can secure this. It's a always cat and mouse game. And no matter how big you are, the next day, you can be a potential target, and what you know, you are down the next day. So let me walk you through with the story here. So FireEye is one of the biggest name in the cybersecurity. It is so big, and I'm not exaggerating it, that the higher management of the FireEye is not allowed to even go to Russia for even a vacation. This is something real. FireEye is one of the biggest name in the industry. Now, a few days ago, FireEye came out and said that we were hacked. And this actually made a big news, that one of the biggest firm in the world was attacked and is accepting that we were hacked. Now, during the hack, they found out that what was breached when it was asked to them, they said, that's actually the biggest nightmare. It was not the nightmare that we were hacked, but the nightmare what was hacked from us. In case, on to let me take you a little bit on the side track. In case you don't know much about the cybersecurity these days, how this is being performed, usually there are two teams, the red team and the blue team. The job of the blue team is to simply go ahead and roll out patches and secure and put the firewall so that people cannot breach. On the other hand, the red team is responsible for simulating the attacks, of course, in the controlled environment. But since some of these attacks are so sophisticated that they need automation. So companies like FireEye, they have their own kind of a big box in which they uh, use these red tools. And by the box, I simply means their software stack or their servers or where they, wherever they are keeping these uh, simulations of these red attacks. Now, some of these red attacks are so much complex and so much powerful that they, if they get out in the world, they can do so much of damage. And yes, you guessed it right. That's exactly was attacked and that's exactly was stolen from FireEye. So all those boxes which were holding these simulations for the red team or the red attacks, they got stolen. Now, according to the official statement of the FireEye, there was no zero-day attack. Now, in case you don't know zero-day, don't worry, let me explain you briefly that. Zero-day is a potential vulnerability which nobody has seen yet. It is a potential vulnerability, but nobody has seen it, so there is no patch, and not a whole lot of people knows about it. Probably a few, you can count them on fingers. These many people only know about zero days. So, according to the FireEye statement, there was no zero-day in that, but according to their statement. Okay. Taking you to the part two of the story, another thing which you might be hearing very soon quite a lot in the news is solar eye attack or the solar hack. There is a lot of name. So what is this solar tool? In order to give you the gravity of the context that how popular the solar wind tool is, imagine any of the 50 Fortune 500 company. Now imagine 50 more. Now imagine 50 more. 
all of them which came to your mind use solar wind the solar wind tool is a go-to tool for every single fortune 500 company and if i'm exaggerating it let's keep the number at almost 90 percent companies big companies use solar wind as their network monitoring tool and it is said that they are, there are probably more than 18,000 customers which are going to be affected by this attack. So you can see that all of the big names that you can think of, they are using SolarWind. Now this solar panel, I have personally never worked on it, but I know all these big companies where I have worked as a remote contractor or as a physically being there, I have seen network people always using these solar teal. And I'm talking about all the big companies uh, that possibly can come to your mind. So SolarWind is a nice tool which keeps a track of monitoring the network, their bandwidth, how is it is using the logs and how the fluctuation are going on. Everything that possibly you can do by networking is being done there. So you can say that it's almost like a monitoring tool for the entire internet which is running on the planet. And what's more scary to this is the client list of the SolarWind. It's one of the biggest firm in the world, uh, including all the big Fortune 500. Also, the State Department, a lot of governments also use this, including FBI, NSA, Treasury Department, State Health Department, almost all of the names that you can uh, think of, including Microsoft. And a whole lot of people are going to come out and forward and say that, yeah, we also use this tool. So all of them were potentially a uh, victim of this hack. Now let me tell you how this hack was actually planned up. Okay, so now the hackers having the access of these red tools, what they did after that? They actually found out that how the network updates of this tool are being delivered. You also get these software patches and software updates and what you do next, you just simply go ahead and update these tools, whatever the tools you are using. Same goes for this SolarWind tool as well. Okay, again, putting this as a side note, I have personally never used SolarWind. I've always been in the software development side of the team. So I've used uh, uh, friends and talking them about the SolarWind, never have personally used it. Okay, so what happens in that is a new update came out for the SolarWind. And uh, again, let me give you a little bit more scary reason here. This update came out in March of 2020. And what attack attackers did was they somehow got the access to the network or the CDN through which they were delivering these updates and they injected a DLL, a malicious DLL along with the patch. So the patch is now going to act as a potential vulnerability to every single person who is going to be updating their software. And everybody loves an update in the software. Who doesn't? You shouldn't like not do it. You should always do an update. So every single company, of course, this is a talk about March. So this is almost the end of 2020. Everybody did the update. And next day, you know, FireEye came out with a public disclosure that we were attacked and entire dots were connected. And this is scary. This is scary because hackers had these access to all of the big giants from March. Now, they are saying that this attack was planned by Russia. We have no proof of that. Nobody claim out and say that this is a rock solid proof about that. So obviously they're gonna name it to Russia, but it can be potentially from other groups of people as well. Now, the, the danger here is that attackers had the access of everything. And yes, they had this network level access in all of these Fortune 500 companies, 18,000 customers, and they had this access from March. Gosh, I'll link some of the articles in the description section and it says like really, really scary how White House, Pentagon, Secret Services, McDonald's restaurant chain, you just name anything, it's everybody is here. Now, not only these attackers have the access of these networks of big companies, but they also know that how these attacks are being made, how the potential firewalls are being kept. So they have, they are knowing now too much of the details. So what will be the impact of this? Currently, we are not seeing any impact. Currently, the news is just out. And we have seen one big giant being down for an hour a couple of days ago. Now, obviously, it is expected that in 2021, it's going to be a biggest, bigger nightmare of the cyber attacks that's are going to happen. Eventually, it's going to scale up. 
So that's a little bit update that you should really know if you are residing anywhere in the IT world, cybersecurity space, or even the coding space. I've tried my best to explain this as dumbed down version as possible. Surely I have excluded a whole lot of details on this to make sure that this video is understandable by the massive audience and not just a specialized group of cybersecurity people. So if you have enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that subscribe button as well. And I'm gonna leave some of the link in the description section from the articles of Garjun and The Verge and TechCrunch so that you can read more further and do a little bit more research. And again, it's not going to be much on the YouTube because people are not going to be making so much videos on that. Probably they will if they'll catch up. But again, I recommend you to read directly from the resources. That's always a good idea. So hit that subscribe, hit that like button, and tomorrow we're going to catch up with another what is kind of videos just like we usually do programming and coding stuff on this channel. So let's go ahead and catch up tomorrow. Wave. Look, the vibe is only something mystical. I don't say you rap my spirit do. Ain't no telling you what he might do. Write the songs, any real too. Trap jumping, it's a rage cage. Short circuit in the mainframe. That I'll be on in a minute though. I just made me a couple of centiphones. I flip with all at the register. Could've lived it twice if I wanted to, but I cherish this. I'm on my character. I'm a problem with the predicate. See, back then I was trapped in with the padded pin to make it happen. I was at risk, but that's past tense. Now they backspin, so they tapped in. All of these girls, but I'm blackest. Could've seen me.